Now to the former Prime Minister, Scott Morrison. As you know, on this show, and we've been around for a while, we have gone on the full journey, as I said before, from him as a shadow minister to multiple ministries through to the prime ministership and after the 2022 election. We've been there on the day after the 2019 election. We, of course, have done uh, pub tests with him on the Central Coast and in Brisbane and a rather famous one in Townsville that we'll get to in a moment or two's time. We've spoken to him at Kirribilli House, at all of the offices. He has been very generous with his time to give us the inside run on how his Prime Ministership was working because on this program, we let him speak. We let him answer the questions however he wishes, but we actually give him the time to answer as opposed to much of the rest of the media that because of, let's be generous there, time constraints... You may end up sending two seconds or half a second or what somebody else interprets about what he said. We also were able to be there as Australia was being honoured by the United States at the White House and for this little bogan that was quite the experience of being able to meet the President of the United States. The photo still stays here in the man cave each and every night just to send lefties crazy. Best selfie ever. <laughs> and I'm pleased to say that after announcing that in February he will formally uh, step down as the member for Cook that the place that he decided to speak first to, and here on television, and most importantly, not to me, but to you, is the former Prime Minister, Scott Morrison. G'day, mate. Hey, Paul. Lovely good, to see you. Good to see you, mate. And g'day to everybody watching tonight. Um, it's, it's great to come here and finally be in the man cave. Finally be I, in the man cave. We've never had an interview here. <laughs> yeah. It's done the White House, done the lawyer, done everything. We've been everywhere. Finally the man cave, it's ticked off. Here we are. Um, We'll talk about our experience and, and all of that in a second, but let's let's deal with for those that are desperately trying to write an article in the next couple of minutes. Yeah. Um, why today? Why now? Well, it's been just over eighteen months uh, since the last election, and uh, during that period of time, I've enjoyed getting back home, uh, Jen and the family back at our family home in the Shire, and I've had a, a great opportunity to get around my local electorate again, and to say thank you to a lot of people and to re-engage with them. My, my electorate in the Shire and s southern Sydney, because it takes in the, those southern parts mm. on, on just on the other side of the Georges River, have been so amazingly supportive of me over my entire time in Parliament. And your first job, whether you're a Prime Minister, a Treasurer, anything else, is you're the member for, and my um, fortuitous case, the member for Cook. It's a place I love. It's where my daughters have been growing up. It's where I go to church. It's where my... You know, I love the place, as you know. And, of course, the home of the Mighty Sharks. <laughs> and... It's been good to do all that. But at some point, you need to make some decisions about what you're going to do longer term. And I've sort of come to that view over the last, you know, several months, the last six months or so. And, uh, and some great opportunities have, have come forward after at the end of Parliament uh, last year. Uh, and, you know, I've had a good opportunity to, to promote what Australia's been doing, particularly in AUKUS. I mean, AUKUS was a, a, a massive agreement and particularly in the United States and the UK it is well understood and I've spent a quite a bit of time in the last 18 months promoting AUKUS, promoting the fact that it's bipartisan which is really important and and had worked with the government to that extent um, because it's something that you know is beyond any one government any one prime minister and, it, and it'll be there like the ANZUS has been there for 70 years so we've got to that point the opportunity is now I can move on, I can say thank you, and one of the reasons I wanted to come on tonight, I know many people have been watching us talk for a long time, you've been terribly supportive, thank you, I appreciate that, and uh, I really just wanted to come on tonight and say thank you to all, for all that support for Australians who sustained us through some pretty difficult times that we had in this country, particularly you know, from stopping the boats to um, standing up to China. Well, and this is the thing, right, where I was thinking about, look, again, you know where the rest of the media is going to go and how they're going to interpret your time in office and where it goes from here. But you did stop the boats. Mm. You did the tax cuts for... Uh, that, of course, we'll talk Stage about... Stage three. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a chat about that <laughs> in a policy. second. Uh, for, for businesses, for workers. Yeah, yeah. There were, of course, the instant asset write-off when it comes to small business. I really like that. It's a very small yeah. policy. No-one's going to yeah. yeah. really particularly yeah, Joe, get Joe into Hockey it. started that, uh, yeah. But we, yeah. We carried it on, Josh and I, yeah. I, And particularly when you push it up to 120, I yep. thought that was great. Um... Obviously, uh, standing up to China um, came at a price, and we all know the multifaceted ways of all of those things. 40,000 lives is how many people yeah. uh, were saved based off those early uh, predictions of what was going to happen. Mm. Um, you've had the multiple royal commissions into things like... I was just looking at this before, again, mm. aged care, veterans, disability, banks. Mm. Uh, and most importantly, of course, it's been about uh, faith and family and a pride in our country. I just yeah. wanted someone somewhere to be able to say that list of things... Yeah. 
but give us an idea about what you're planning between now and, say, that final speech. Are you going to be one of those people who stands there and lists every single thing and on the second Tuesday and then I did this and then I did that? Or is yeah. it going to be between now and that time an opportunity to have a broader reflection? I think the major opportunity I got between now and then is just to keep saying thank you. Yeah, right. And that was my overwhelming feeling actually on the night of the last election. You know, Jenny and I were you know, driving across uh, for our last trip in, uh, in that capacity um, across the bridge and I, I was, we were both just overtaken with this sense of gratitude. Um, yes, of course, we were disappointed, naturally. Mm. At, at, you know, a, a massive contrast to just three years before and the elation of that. But it is a great privilege to serve your country and to be able to do it as a member of parliament, as a minister, as a treasurer and as a prime minister, if you get that opportunity. And so I'm just enormously grateful. Um, you know, you, you let all the, the extent there's bitterness, you let it go. You, you let all of those things go. I'm sure there's things that, you know, you know people will need to forgive me for and I'll forgive them. Mm -hmm. um, you, you just don't carry these things around for you and you look forward. We live in the best country in the world. Um, like to keep it that way, and there's plenty of great people um, from the Liberal Party and the Nationals who can be there to help that. I have no doubt plenty in the Labor Party who want to choose the same thing. Um, and so saying thank you, Paul, is, is the main thing. Yeah, there'll come a time, and, you know, we, I participated in the program that uh, Chris put together here at Sky. There'll be another one coming up in, a, in, a, in another... Uh, with, an, with another broadcaster. But, you know, others will reflect on that. It's never been something that's really driven me. Mm. Um, Teddy Roosevelt is a great hero of mine, you know. He, he used to talk about, you know, I'm, I'm one of those ones who, you know, was on the field, you know, I know who, who've known victory and defeat, not one of those uh, timid souls who've known neither mm. um, and just looks on from the outside. So, you know, s saying thank you and being appreciative and being respectful. I think most people's brains would explode with paranoia when inevitably, somebody's writing the headline right now, yeah. ScoMo compares himself to Teddy Roosevelt in an interview <laughs> on Sky News. Which I didn't. Um, no, yeah. of course not. But I'm saying He's inspired that's, me. that's yeah. the point of yeah. what we're trying to talk about here, is that most people's brains just would explode on how things are yeah. presented. Yeah. And we talked after the election, but now we've got even yeah. more time to ask that question, mm. which is... You know, in, in the day-to-day, -day, you've got to be involved, you've got to see, you've got to read, you've got to see the feedback, you've got to see what's working and not working. Mm. Um, were there moments when you just... It was frustrating, like it was to every other normal human oh, of being? Course. And you went, this is unfair, but then sometimes if there was a big hit, you went, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, look, that, that is political life. And political life... Um, my chief of staff used to say... Uh, uh, I don't know where he picked up the quote from. Maybe it was originally said, but if you want fair, don't go into politics. Um, and that's that's not a whinge. That's just a reality. And so if you don't like what happens in there and you get a hard time and, you know, people say untrue things about you, well, yeah, that's going to happen. Um, I wish it happened less, but... And it should, should never sort of impact, you know, on your family and things like that, and that should always be mm. a, a no-go zone, having a great what people do with their families. But, you know, it still happens. But, no, you can't complain about the field you're on. You choose a life in, in, in public service in politics and that's going to come with some slings and arrows. The key thing is, and look, my faith informs me a lot on this, is you, you don't carry it around with you for the rest of your life. Mm. And so you ask me why now. Well, now is a, is a good opportunity. I'm really pleased to see Peter Dutton and the team, Susan Lee and the whole, with the Nats and so on, doing really well. You know, they are holding this government to account. You know, haven't come on here to have a partisan discussion tonight, really. But, you know, they're doing a great job. And they've come through some difficult times. Peter has shown, I think, tremendous leadership since the last election. I've been thrilled to be able to give him my support um, behind the scenes and in, and in front of the scenes as well. And to mentor a number of some of the new ministers, shadow ministers are coming through. A number of them said to me last year, particularly, look, it'd be great if you hung around a little longer. And I was happy to do that. But at some point, you know, locally, while I've enjoyed the time locally, a new candidate needs to be selected by the Liberal Party and I've given them plenty of time now to go and do that process properly and I look forward to them putting someone forward for the by-election when it comes who can have that passion and long-term commitment that I certainly took to the job over 16 years ago. Now, um, you said you don't want to get partisan, but I have to ask about the sure. Stage 3 stuff, right? Yeah. Now, we don't know what the announcement's going to be tomorrow, no. but I have no doubt how it's going to be spun, which is, yes, we broke a promise, but we did it in the pursuit of fairness. 
Why does that not stack up? Well, it, it's the but. Yes, we broke a promise. No, full stop. Yeah, correct. Full stop. Um, I, you know, I remember the last election. It was very clear. We'd gone to the 2019 election and that election was about those tax cuts, including the Lamido, which mm. was put in place first after my first... Uh, I think it was my first budget as Treasurer in 2016-17, and that went over it. You know, they said it was a seven-year program, and this is the last phase. It really only had two features, and that was to wipe out the 37-cent tax bracket. Really important. So if you earned everywhere from 45000 200000 a year, you would pay no more than 30 cents in the dollar for every extra dollar you earned. Mm. That's, that was one of, that was important because it gave people incentive. I mean, bracket creep for the vast majority of Australians was gone. Mm. You could just take the extra shift. You could get the work hard for the promotion. You could go and study. You could do things to really do what you could. And he said very clearly, no changes, we will do it. So I suppose really the question now, and it's for Peter and others, I suppose, to be making this case, and I have no doubt they will, <laughs> but next time you hear them say, oh, we won't change, um, you know, franking credits, or we, we, or we won't change negative gearing, or we, well, on what possible basis, if they make those changes, and I hope in good sense the Prime Minister will not make those changes and keep his word, because I think it's good policy, and if, as you were suggesting in your intro, that they need to have extended the Lomito, well, well, fair enough. They could do that. I mean, we had, had it scheduled to come off. I'm not making any uh, and, and as otherwise. Said, I would have been, I would have been. You would have said the same thing to me. Screaming at you for the whole time. And 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 and, and Josh and I, um, you know, would have considered mm. that decision in the context of the economic correct, circumstances correct. we're now facing, and whether we could have done that then we would have made a call about it. But, you know, those tax cuts for Stage 3, when they were first announced, we said they'll be the last ones to come. And it's sort of people have gone that whole journey. And, you know, it just makes me con concerned that, you know, you've got to run the, f the country for the people who pay tax too. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Last one here. Uh, I want to take you back to before Prime Minister, um, yep. and this was as the Treasurer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, we were yeah, in yeah. Townsville, and yeah. we were talking to people about the budget and letting yeah. people... Because I like the idea again. Yeah, yeah. You've heard what he's had to say, like, dis whatever. OK, but you hear what he's having to say, and I like the idea that normal people in Townsville were able to um, ask you questions. Um, but it was one of those nights where uh, we were at a brewery. We, we were. And I was amazed at your ability to have the... Uh, <laughs> Awareness of the numbers uh, because the local product was quite good, wasn't it? It was good. I remember we'd made some changes to excise uh, when I was treasurer, and and that was to help sort of local craft brewers. And you know, Aaron Townsville, there was one literally in the pub, yep. and part of that was you know, there's my old tourism hat is you know, local breweries, people coming, you know, drinking the local product and all that, and they were getting taxed uh, at a penalty rate to just the big brewers mm. now. That ticked a lot of boxes, letting the little guys be on the same platform as the big guys. And they'd put together, I think it was a ScoMo, ScoMo pale ale beer, yes. that night. I still got the poster from my staff. And uh, you and I made sure that we, um, you know, tasted the yeah. local product. Yeah. Uh, um, the reason I say this is that we supported small business... We did. ...very effectively uh, on the air, is the best I'll say. It was, it was, look, it was a great night, um, but it was a particularly great night. I always used to enjoy... And you and I started doing them on the Central Coast mm. when I was Treasurer. And, and we got some pretty, you know, strong feedback, I remember, uh, in some of those Q&As that we did, mm. which was a real Q&A. Yes. Um, and, uh, and I really valued those sessions, particularly after a budget when I was Treasurer, because you got a pretty raw, quick response from yes. people about where they're at on some issues. And, and I enjoyed doing them, we, and we did, we did more of them. And, uh, and we went out into places... Where we really went out into places and right. people showed up and they, they had to get on your, your list by just... Send an email, nothing send an email, else. And then they came and, yeah, there you go. The reason I say all of that and the reason yeah. I go into that is just, again, you've given our viewers a great insight into mm. how it works at its best, at its mm. worst. Um, and, again, no-one's saying goodbye or anything weird like that. No. But it's just thank you for the opportunities that you gave us. Thank you for the way you served the country. Again, those that want to get into the morsels of who, what and when... There are shows and documentaries about it. There'll be other interviews, but yeah. uh, 
Um, Scott, thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Paul. And thanks to, very much to all your viewers. And I'm not going anywhere immediately and yeah. look forward to following the conversation. Uh, but as a private citizen, uh, you know, maybe I'll throw something at television occasionally, like I know some ex-Prime Ministers also do. <laughs> but uh, I'll just let you know, mate. <laughs> Correct. Look forward to it. All right, thank you. Uh, former Prime Minister Scott Morrison. All right, that's, uh, that's a chat with him.